Alrighty, let's see here. This is basically, this is going to be a PowerPoint, a slideshow. Uh, we're going to go practice a little bit more with these different things that we've taken a look at. We're going to practice five problems. See if you know what you're doing. Uh, once again, this has to do with things like uh, mechanical advantages, ideal machines, efficiency, and uh, stuff like that. Now, we're going to go through it. We're going to explain each and every one of these, but we're also going to suggest pausing it so that you can go ahead, take a moment, and you can just check if you're doing it correctly so far. All right. So for this first one, I have a block and a tackle system. Uh, I pull down with 200 pounds of force and I lift up 0.6 tons with it. How many strings is my load hanging on? And for a bonus, we can go ahead and draw it. Now, let me get my pen going here. All right. So block and tackle system, basically that means we have fixed pulleys. So here's a nice little fixed pulley up here and movable pulleys and our load is on the movable pulley. Now, we did take a look. Uh, we are pulling up 0.6 tons with it. We are pulling 200 pounds. Now, I'm just gonna say there is one set of strings here. We'll just start out with that even though that's probably not the case. Now, whatever mass I have here if it's on one fix and one movable pulley, one movable pulley will mean that it's hanging on one, two strings. And so I only have to pull with half the mass to go ahead and pull this thing up, okay? Let's check out the mechanical advantage of this system. Mechanical advantage we learned for any simple machine is output force divided by input force. Now, we did say the output force, that's the dead weight. That's the thing trying not to move. The input force is always you. You are always trying to move the object. So, output force divided by the input force. In this case, the output force is the 0.6 tons. I don't like that though. I don't like 0.6 tons. I'm going to put them in pounds just so I can match it with the other one. So pounds, uh, sorry, that should be a B. Pounds to tons, one ton is 2,000 pounds. So if I take 0.6 times 2,000 pounds, I get total output force of 1,200 pounds over the input force. I'm putting 200 pounds of force into it, okay? Now, the labels, as long as they're the same, that's fine. I could have taken this 200 pounds and I could have changed it into tons and that would be absolutely fine. But 1200 divided by 200 is going to be six. That tells me because the mechanical advantage of a pulley system is the same as the number of strings it's hanging on, that tells me it has to be hanging on six strings. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this right here and we're going to take a look at what's actually going on then. What would be going on is we would have to have one, two, three fixed pulleys and one, two, three movable pulleys down here to the load. If we wanted to draw it, the string would be connected right here. It would go under a movable, over a fixed, under a movable, over a fixed, under a movable, and over a fixed. That's what it would have to look like. That way it's hanging on one, two, three, four, five, and I must have missed one in here, six. It's hanging on six strings. So I, I mean, I'm basically dividing my load by six. I'm only pulling with 200 pounds to, 12, to, to pull up a 120 pound device, but I do have to pull six times more string. If I want this to go up one meter, I would have to pull six meters of rope to go ahead and do this. Okay, let's go ahead, let's try the next one. Uh, don't worry about those degree of difficulties right now. In class, we're gonna do, do use clickers to do it, but this is a little bit more just practice, okay? <clears throat> now, this question. You're an engineer designing a dump truck that works like a second class lever. The hydraulics can push up with two tons of force and they can push up eight feet. Your truck can be filled up with two and a half tons of dirt and will be lifted up to 5.2 feet. What is the efficiency 
of your dump truck. Okay. So for this one, a little bit differently, um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to draw a nice little picture of a dump truck the best I absolutely can. So there's a wonderful little truck. You got your load here. This is where the hydraulics would be. They're pushing up. We better put some wheels on it. Um, back here, this is the hinge, and that's how we can see it is a second class lever. This is the fulcrum. Then you have the resistance of the load, and then you have the effort, in this case, the hydraulics trying to push up. We know we're going to use the efficiency equation. Uh, we know efficiency is, it equals force output times distance output divided by force input times distance input. Basically, it's the work coming out of the machine divided by the work going into the machine. Okay? Now, force output, the force coming out of the machine, that's the, the output's the dead weight, was trying not to move. Uh, that would be the two and a half tons of dirt. So up here, I'm going to put 2.5 tons of dirt times distance output. It's going to go up when the hydraulics go up, this is going to go up too, but it's not going to go as far. So it's going to go up 5.2 feet. All right. Divided by the force input. Now, in this case, it's the hydraulics doing the force input. They can push up with 2 tons, and they're going to push up further. They're going to push up 8 feet. Okay, so basically we have 2.5 times 5.2. Uh, basically, if my math is correct, I believe that's 13, but I better check that just to be sure. 2.5 times 5.2, yep, is 13. Now down here, 2 times 8 is going to be 16. So my efficiency is 13 sixteenths. Uh, 13 divided by 16 is point. 8125. 0.8125. But efficiency, we have to think about the labels. Efficiency is usually explained in a percentage. So I'm going to divide it by 100. Same thing as moving this decimal over two places to get this is an 81% efficient machine. Another way of saying that is for the work going into it, we get 81% of the work coming out of it. Okay. Hopefully that helps you. Let's go on to the next one. All right. <clears throat> this one says I have a two by four that you're using as a third class lever. So we better remember that. Uh, you can lift up with 200 pounds of force, and lift up 125 pounds student. Uh, you lift up three feet. How high will the student go? Assuming that your lever has no friction or air resistance. Okay. Let's draw a nice little picture. I always love to draw pictures for it. Third class lever, we have our fulcrum, there's the lever, we have the effort. And so this would be someone straining just to go ahead and pick this thing up. But at the end of it, we have a student. The student is 125 pounds. And obviously, gravity pulls the student down, okay? So let's see what do we have going on here. Um, how high will a student go, assuming that your lever has no friction or air resistance? The student is obviously going to go much further than you lift it up because they're out at the end of the lever. Okay, For this one, assuming you have, uh, your lever has no friction or air resistance, that's a good hint as to what formula we're going to use. We're going to use the ideal machine formula. We're going to say force output times distance output equals force input times distance input. Okay. Now we're pretending that all the work going into the machine gets changed into work coming out of the machine. Now, that doesn't happen, but it's going to be dangerously close because this thing, there's not going to be much friction at all down there at the fulcrum. So, force coming out of the machine. We are lifting up a 125 pound student with our machine. Distance, we don't know. We don't know how far that student's going to go. We do know we're going to put 200 pounds of force into the machine. So 200 pounds, all right, times we know we're going to lift the machine up three 
feet, okay? Now we are making a few assumptions because we don't know how long it is from the fulcrum to the effort or from the fulcrum to the resistance. We are making a few assumptions. We're figuring that, that of the 200 pounds of force, it's all of it's being changed into the work to lift up the 125 pound student. Okay, but let's go ahead and work on this here. Uh, 125 times D sobo equals 200 times three. Well, this side, I'm gonna do it down here, but 200 times three, that's fairly simple. That's gonna be 600. So now we have 125 times D sub O equals 600. We would divide both sides by 125 and 600 divided by 125 ends up being 4.8, okay? So we can safely say distance output is gonna be 4.8 feet. And we know it's in feet because we used it in feet to put it into the machine. And so the distance coming out of the machine will be in feet as well. So it's a little messy, but it's 4.8 feet. So moving on, let's see here. <clears throat> Question number four. I'm building a wheelchair ramp for my grandma. Her front porch is four feet high, and I want to make a 12-foot long ramp. What is the mechanical advantage for this ramp? Now we have to understand. I'm not making it super clear here, but for this ramp, I mean along the ground, it's 12 feet coming out, and it's four feet going up. Okay. For the mechanical advantage, we know that the mechanical advantage of any ramp or any inclined plane is going to be length divided by height. Now, we do have to say length. Well, what is the actual length? This right here, this is the length that we care about. Very few of us push our grandmothers across the ground and then straight up a wall. This is not the length that we use for the wheelchair, so that's not the length that we use for the problem as well. This is the length that we care about. Now, we do have to figure that out. To do that, you have to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is going to be 12, so a squared is going to be 144 plus b. b is 4, so 4 squared is 16 equals c squared. Well, 144 plus 16 is going to be 160 equals c squared. We take the square root of that to get c, and I'm just going to put it up here. This length that we're using is actually 12.64 feet. And I am rounding out, but 12.64 will be plenty. So we're going to go back here, and we're going to say 12.64 feet divided by 4 feet once again. Labels on the top and bottom match, so we're absolutely fine. Equals... Let's see here, this would end up being 3.16. 3.16, now it's mechanical advantage. You really don't need a label. I like putting a little X there. So whatever force I'm using, this RAM, this, this simple machine will multiply that force by 3.16 times, okay? It's like making myself three times stronger than I actually am, or like making your grandmother three times stronger than she actually is. So when we go to the, on to the bonus, my grandma can only push on her wheelchair wheels with 20 pounds of force. It takes her 70 pounds of force to move her. Will this ramp work out for her? Okay. Now, for this one, you just have to understand the definition of mechanical advantage. All right. We figured out that this incline plane will increase uh, any force by 3.16. Grandma can only push on the wheels with 20 pounds of force. Well, let's see how much force is coming out. If we take our answer, our 3.16 times... 20, that means that this ramp is going to make it seem as if grandma can push with 63.24 pounds of force. Unfortunately, we figured out pulling her up the, the incline plane, or you could also say pushing her up the incline plane, is it takes 70 pounds of force. So this ramp right here is not going to work. We're going to have to make a longer ramp, something that will give her more of a mechanical advantage because this one will not be strong enough to, for her to get herself up the ramp. Okay. 
And the last one that we're going to do today, this one is a pretty tough one. I have a three quarter inch bolt that's rusted into my lawnmower. My ratchet is 10 inches long and a ratchet's just like a wrench. In fact, I'm gonna draw it as if it's a wrench. What is the mechanical advantage of this ratchet? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. Here is my bolt head and a three quarter inch bolt is three fourths of an inch across. I'm gonna put my ratchet, but I'm just gonna draw it as a wrench, just like that, all right. And this thing right here we're gonna say is 10 inches long, okay? Mechanical advantage, we already know what mechanical advantage is, but we did learn in class, the mechanical advantage of any uh, lever is the effort arm divided by the resistance arm. In this case, we can figure, we can see this thing as a lever, or you could even see it as a wheel and axle, because that's gonna come around, but we would say, all right, this distance right here, that is the effort arm. We know that one, we know it is 10 inches. Over the resistance arm. Now, this gets a little bit, little, little bit uh, technical, but here, is the radius of the circle. So the radius arm, we better use only the radius of the circle as well. It's three quarters of an inch all the way across. That means that the radius is going to be three eighths of an inch, okay? So really it's 10 divided by three eighths, okay? So let me figure out that out real quick. Um, three divided by eight, that bomb's actually gonna be the same thing as 0.125. So really it's 10 divided by 1.125. And we get, no, this can't be right. All right, so we get a mechanical advantage of 80, okay? So this wrench here, will make it 80 times, um, make me 80 times more powerful than if I just tried grabbing the head of the bolt and just tried twisting it absolutely as hard as I could. So 10 divided by 3 eighths is 80. Okay. Hey, I hope this helped. I hope that you uh, learned something from this. Um, don't worry about this one. We're not going to do this one right now. So Thank you. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you used your pause button a little bit and tried these a little bit on your own. Thank you. Bye-bye.